The first step in fueling the aircraft is to ensure that it's properly grounded. The normal means of grounding the Challenger 850-890 aircraft is to use a bayonet pin which is inserted into a hole underneath the wing and just aft of the leading edge. The Challenger 850 has one grounding point inside the nose gear well. The 890 also has grounding points on the main gear leg and next to the fuel connection. With the aircraft properly grounded, move to the fuel control panel located next to the right wing root and power up the system using the main power switch. Press and hold the lamp test button to ensure that all indicator lights are working. For automatic fueling, rotate the knob to the fuel auto position. Then use the increase decrease toggle switch to select the fuel quantity to the desired amount. Note that if the toggle switch is held in position, the fuel quantity will go up by hundreds of pounds instead of tens. Now, open the panel which houses the single point refuel defuel adapter. Remove the red fuel cap and connect the fueling hose to the single point connection. At this point, ensure that the valve on the high pressure fueling hose is fully opened. Ensure that these steps are done in this sequence prior to fueling, or the automatic fueling function of the aircraft may not work. Now, pressurize the fuel hose by engaging the dead man switch. Finally, on the refuel defuel panel, switch the automatic off on switch to on. The fuel system computer will automatically calculate which tanks should be fueled and will open the shutoff valves accordingly. Position of the shutoff valves is indicated by the open and close lights at the top of the panel. In this case, we see that the wing tanks are open while the center tank is closed. Two to three hundred pounds before each tank reaches its scheduled quantity, the fuel system computer conducts a bite test. In this test, the shutoff valves are momentarily closed for about ten seconds and then reopened, allowing the fuel to go up to the scheduled quantity. When each tank reaches its scheduled quantity, the shutoff valves will close once again. The fueling operation is now complete. Switch off the auto toggle switch, rotate the rotary knob to off, and finally shut down the system computer using the main switch on the left side of the panel. Failure to shut down this panel will result in a fuel cross-flow inhibit message in the cockpit. If the automatic system does not work or is unserviceable, fuel using the manual mode. Power up the system as before, only this time switch the rotary knob to fuel manual. Pressurize the fuel hose using the dead man switch. In this mode, the tank shutoff valves are manually opened using the toggle switches. Fuel will immediately begin to flow into any tank for which the shutoff valve switch is open. This system must be monitored closely through the entire fueling process. Once the fuel level in each tank approaches its desired quantity, the fueling is stopped by selecting the shutoff valve switch to off. In manual mode, the only failsafe is the high level detector in each tank. Once the high level is reached, the shutoff valves will automatically close regardless of switch position. Some settling of the fuel may occur after the switch is shut off and it may be necessary to reopen the shutoff valves to bring the fuel up to exactly the desired quantity if it's a bit low. Fueling is now complete. Switch the rotary knob to off. Turn the main system power off and lower the guard. Close the door on the fuel control panel and the fuel connection panel. In the event of a fueling system failure or if single point refueling is not available, it is possible to fuel the main wing tanks using conventional overwing fueling. It is possible to fuel the center tank on the Challenger 850, however this requires maintenance action and some tools. The Challenger 890 cannot have its center tank fueled overwing.